Road and Track. If you're in the United States, you've probably heard of them. One of the biggest YouTube channels that test cars, in particular performance cars, around tracks. In particular, their racetrack in the United States. They just tested the latest Ford Mustang GT. It's not electric. Of course, the V8 version. The new version of the Mustang GT. And it was slower than the old version. Now, everyone's going, what, what's going on here? Ford bring out a new Mustang V8 and it's slower than the old version. Doesn't make sense. Anyhow, this got me to thinking one thing. I wonder how electric cars go against the Ford Mustang GT around road and tracks test track. So I jumped on their YouTube channel and I thought, this is weird. I've never ever seen these guys test a Tesla or any other EV on their test track. Why have they never done this? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. So I had to do this. I had a look at Top Gear. Top Gear have tested electric cars around their racetrack. In fact, there's a Wikipedia page and an official website showing all the different cars that Top Gear have tested when they tested them and their performance times. And it shows, reveals one really, really interesting thing. If you want a car that goes fast around a racetrack, I'm not saying you necessarily would, but if you do, the cheapest one you can get, according to Top Gear, that will actually beat million dollar supercars is in fact the Tesla Model 3, not even the new version, the old version. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And you've probably guessed by now, I've always been a bit of a petrol head, a bit of a, what do you guys call it in the US? Gearhead. Um, anyway, I've always been into cars. Internal combustion, I used to, cars I used to love. I used to buy all the magazines. I'd buy Car and Driver. I'd buy, buy every, all the magazines from the UK. Uh, Evo, Car Magazine. And that's what I used to do at lunchtime in my work breaks. I would just read these magazines or even at school as well in my lunch break at high school. And then I suddenly realized that um, internal combustion sucks in comparison to electric motors. It's just, well, slow. Nothing's changing. Case in point, the new Mustang GT is slower than the old Mustang GT. That's ridiculous. How can that be possible? So, at the Top Gear test track. Jeremy Clarkson, he basically said EVs suck. You probably all heard that. Now, I do like Clarkson. I don't, I don't know why, but I, th I think he's... He reminds me of my granddad. My granddad was from Wales, and he sounded a little bit like Jeremy Clarkson. He was kind of similar to him in many ways. But anyway, then Top Gear went and tested the Tesla Model 3 performance. And I've, I've said on this channel a few times, it easily beat the BMW M2 and Top Gear were like, no, 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 this can't be right. What? And they tested it again. Same thing happened. So what does this prove? Well, nothing really. But to me, it shows you that EVs, even if they're heavy, too heavy uh, for, to be performance cars. I mean, what are we hearing from McLaren, right? McLaren said, based on today's technology, you can't have an electric supercar today. Well, Ferrari disagree with that. Ferrari said they've already developed a new electric supercar. Rematch Navira, obviously Rematch, have an electric supercar. Um, other manufacturers in China have just revealed their electric supercars. BYD, uh, Aeon have an electric supercar you can now buy as well. And they're actually relatively affordable. The performance is staggering. Clearly, McLaren are just off with the fairies. And even what's even more remarkable at all of this is the fact that at this track, the Top Gear test track. Top Gear tested the Porsche Taycan Turbo. Not the Turbo S, just the standard turbo model. And it beat. I mean, we're talking the Bugatti Veyron. It beat supercars from Ferrari. It beat so many cars here, it's not even worth listing them. That is a big, heavy vehicle. It's not a performance car, but it isn't exactly cheap. Most people will never own a Porsche Taycan Turbo because it's outside of the budgets of most mere mortals, such as myself. But you can afford a Tesla Model 3 Performance. The price of them today has, it's never been cheaper. I mean, look at inflation. Inflation's going up. The price of the Model 3 Performance has come down. So have other cars that are similar to the Model 3 Performance. The Obviously, the Kia EV6 GT, that's fast. 
Uh, there's quite a few different EVs that are, have similar performance to the Model 3 performance. Now, I don't know how they'd go around a track because I haven't seen any independent testing of track time, so I can't really compare them. But I have seen the Model 3 performance perf tested on the Top Gear track. I went back and I watched the episode. It was shown in 2019, Series 27 of Top Gear. So four years ago. The Model 3 performance at the time, I think it's actually more powerful now. I believe the power has been upgraded for the Model 3 performance. And of course, the new Model 3 performance Highland will be closer to the Plaid. So performance will destroy the current Model 3 performance of the new version. It's going to be way better. But anyway, based on the existing version that you can buy today, which has been around, like I said, since 2018, it did one minute 21.5 seconds. Now to give you some context here, the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, considered one of the kings of track racing, did one minute 21 seconds. That means the Model 3 performance was 0.5 of a second, 0.5 of a second slower than the GT3 RS. That's crazy. Next, the Ferrari 599 GTB Furano, right? That thing costs, I think, about 10 times more than the Model 3 Performance. They did 122.22. Now, both of those times for the 911 GT3 RS and the GTB Furano were done in the dry. They weren't done in the wet. There's same testing conditions. I'm, not, I'm comparing apples with apples here. What else did it beat? Well, it did exactly the same time as the Aston Martin DB11. Now, Aston Martin DB11, I think, costs, depending on where you are, but here in Australia, it costs around $700,000. Model 3 Performance costs around, I think, about $85,000. Big difference. So what cars did it actually beat? Well, it beat the BMW M3. Surprisingly, I didn't know that until I looked this up. It beat the Porsche 718 Cayman S. It beat the Jaguar F-Type R. The F-Type R, that's the super expensive V8 supercharged version that has the track pack, right? It beat the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. It beat the Audi R8 V10. It beat the Chevrolet Corvette C8 Stingray. It beat the Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. It beat the Lamborghini Urus. It beat the Ford GT. Actually beat the Ford GT, surprisingly, by 0.6 of a second. Uh, it beat the RS6 Avant, it beat the Porsche 997 Turbo Cabriolet, it beat the Caterham 7, it beat the Audi R8 V10 Spider, it beat the Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale, it beat the Porsche GT3 RS, the 996 version. Now I could go on forever because there's so many cars in this list that the Tesla Model 3 Performance easily beat around the track. Now I'm not saying that the Model 3 Performance is a track car, it's clearly not a track car. Uh, probably the Tesla Model S Plaid is more of a track car. It has ceramic brakes. Those brakes would last longer. It's got a bigger battery pack. It's heavier, but it would still be more suitable for track racing. The key point here is electric cars can be performance cars. They can be track cars. And very soon, electric cars will wipe the floor completely with internal combustion. Internal combustion will be loud and shouty and slow. We will equate noise with slow. Kind of like seeing a tractor, right? What do you hear? You see a tractor, you think slow. We're going to see noise and think slow. That's what I think anyway. Let me know if you agree with that in the comments. Thanks for watching.